public safety expects a record number of accidents over the coming holiday weekend due to crowded highways and icy streets. So we at WJMTV urge you to do your bit and drive carelessly. Did, did I really hear that, or was it just my imagination? Oh, I hear what? Well, no, it must have been my imagination. Did I hear what I just Generation. heard? Generation, yeah, I think you did. <laughs> Five, four, three, two... Uh-huh. It'll be for me. Yes, Sam. Yes, I heard that. No, no, we're not advocating reckless driving, Sam. No, no, it's just that Baxter's mouth is accident prone. Yes, Sam, yes, I do plan to do something about it. Yes, right now. Yes, Sam. If you can read this, you're fried. (laughs) You're fired! (laughs) What for? Because you can't even read this! Seems like a pretty small thing. Did you hear what you said in your sign off? Well, I wasn't paying much attention. I'll look and see. Department of Public Safety expects a regular coming holiday weekend due to crowded ice. We at WGM urge you to do your bit and drive carelessly. You did it again. He did it again. I could give him ten shots at it, but you'd still say carelessly every time, wouldn't you? Well, sure, that's what it says. If it's wrong, it's not my fault. It's Murray's. (laughs) You're hired. I'm hired? You're hired. Not so fast, Lou. You just fired me. If you want to hire me, it'll have to be for more money. More money. That's right. But first you're going to have to say, I'm sorry, Ted. I'm sorry, Ted. All right, now let's talk about money. How much? You humiliated me in front of my staff, Lou. You said harsh, uncomplimentary things which were unfounded and uncalled. How much? Ten bucks a week be okay? You got it. Thanks, Lou. (laughs) Hey, that worked out pretty good, eh, guys? Murray, come into my office. (laughs) Sit down, Murray. I'm already sitting. Sit down, I said. Sure, Lou. Did you just yawn at me? No, I just didn't yawn at you. I tried to yawn away from you. You missed. Well, I'm sorry, Lou, but, uh, well, you know what it's like when you feel a yawn coming on and you don't want to yawn and you try not to yawn. You know what it's like, don't you? Yeah, you yawn. You see, you're just getting yourself. Murray, why are we wasting my time talking about your yawns? I just had to apologize to Ted out there. I don't like to apologize to Ted. I like to chew Ted out. And I don't like it when I chew Ted out and find out I'm wrong. Am I boring you? (laughs) Will you stop that? I just told you, when you try to stop, you can't. If I can stop, you can stop. And I'm stopping. See? No yawning. But the next time you make a mistake on Baxter's copy, I'll dock you the extra money I had to pay him. Okay, that's all. Hey, you know, that's terrific, Lou, the way you can just not yawn like that. Just takes willpower, that's all. Just like that? Just like that. Everything okay? Yeah, sure, fine, thanks. Hi, right, Mary. Uh, night, Mr. Graham. Murray. Good night, Lou. It won't happen again, Lou. I know. (sighs) You know, I don't blame Lou for being mad. I don't know how a mistake like that ever got on the air. It was my fault, Murray. I didn't have a chance to check your copy. You've been checking my copy? Well, I wasn't going to say anything about it, but... Well, okay, now that nobody has mentioned it, for the last couple of weeks, I can not only see that something is bothering you, Murray, I can read it. You mean you've been covering for me, Mary? 
We've all been covering for you, Murr. Usually I manage to capture typos, but uh, once in a while something slips by me. I'm not perfect, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, take it too hard. You do a good job in other ways. See you Monday, all. To have to take that from him and to know he's right. Hey, Murray, something is bothering you, isn't it? Why do you say that? Well, I, it's not just the mistakes in your copies. I mean, you just... You don't seem yourself. You seem tired. Yeah, well, I, I guess I am a little tired. Hey, look, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be crying like this. I mean, you and I are good friends, and, and if you want to tell me something, you will. And uh, in the meantime, it's uh, your problem, right? Right. It isn't any, uh, you know, kind of uh, trouble at home, is it? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, Marie and I are going to celebrate our 10th wedding anniversary in two weeks. Hey, terrific. What are you going to get her? Uh, well, I always buy her something big, but she's so practical, she always returns it and gets something small. So I thought this year I'd just get her something small to begin with. Oh, uh, what? A compact car. A car? Yeah. I've been moonlighting at night to try to come up with a down payment. Maybe that's why I'm so tired. Murray, you got another job? For a month now. I think it's catching up with me. I think it's winning. <sighs> yeah, but I guess in a week I'll have the down payment. In two weeks I'll have enough to buy a tank full of gas. <laughs> well, what's the job anyway? Uh, what? I said, what's the new job? Oh, well, I'm teaching uh, basic news writing night school. Hey, Murray, I didn't know you could teach. Well, neither did I, but I always wanted to try, so... Uh... Oh, well, listen, you can count on me to cover for you. Thanks, Mary. And I know you can count on Ted. Uh, I'm as good as fried already. <laughs> I gotta tell you who I saw tonight. Oh, uh, who? Do you have some hot anything? Uh, uh coffee. Oh, yeah. that's great, yeah. So, uh, who did you see tonight? Well, I'll get to that. First, let me tell you about my date. You remember that uh, computer technician? The one whose hands were programmed for touching and grabbing? <laughs> yeah, I think so. The one you said you wouldn't go out with again in a million years? Yeah, well, uh, it's amazing how fast a million years can go by. <laughs> So is that who you're going to tell me you ran into? No, no, I'm coming to that. First, let me tell you where he took me on the date. Get this, a drive-in movie. Rhoda, who goes to a drive-in movie in the winter? He does. He figures if you get cold enough. Mm. Oh, ha, ha. Mr. Subtle. Mary, six times he presses the reclining seat button. I find myself looking up at the roof of the car instead of the screen. What'd you do? I called a cab. So you took a cab home from a drive-in movie? Yeah. Hmm. How about that? Another first for the kid, right? <laughs> so listen, I get in the cab, I give the address, and the driver grunts and starts off without even glancing around. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just looks straight ahead. All I can see are these eyes staring at me in the rearview mirror. Mary, whose eyes were they? Uh, uh, Rhoda, whose eyes were they? Well, I'm coming to that. So as we're driving along, <laughs> I quick remember what my mother always told me. When you get in a cab, always check the little picture of the driver uh -huh. and memorize his hack number, just in case you have to identify him in a police lineup, right? Yeah. Which I did. I memorized the picture and the number, uh -huh. which brings me to who I saw tonight. Oh, good. <laughs> Nine, three, six, two, eight. Oh, God. The driver was Murray. Murray? My Murray? Yeah, from the newsroom. Uh, would you... Well, that's impossible. Murray is teaching at night. Yeah? Well, tell him the ashtrays are full in his classroom. Murray, <laughs> driving a cab, but did you say hello to him or anything? Oh, no. It was obvious the man was embarrassed to have me see him. So I didn't say anything. Well, I wonder why he told me such a I don't know, Mayor, but I'll tell you, I feel very bad about the whole thing. Bad about what? Seeing him? No. Not tipping him. Oh. Force of habit. <sighs> Mary, how about some coffee? Oh, no, thanks. It keeps me. Mary, we 
get these revised figures to sales? Yes, sir. Say, Lou, while we're at it, I'd like my dressing room painted. <laughs> what do you mean, while we're at it? I mean about last Friday night, you know, a little talk about the uh, apology and the raise. Well, I've decided I want my dressing room painted. No. For me to give you anything else, Murray's gonna have to make another big mistake so that I make a big mistake and fire you for his mistake. But Murray's not gonna make another mistake. And if I fire you, the next time it's not gonna be a mistake. Did I say good morning, Lou? Good morning, Ted. Morning, Mary. Good morning, Ted. Morning, Mert. <laughs> Speaking of good morning, Mer, where is he? Uh, uh, you mean, uh, Murray? Huh? Oh, uh, well, Murray is, uh, just, uh, down, down the hall. Uh, down the, uh, cold hall. <laughs> cold. Murray, you're late. Yeah, I know, no, I'm sorry. Now don't start that again. <sighs> Mary. Oh, thanks. Mary, look, I gotta talk to you about what happened last night. You mean about Rhoda recognizing you? Murray, why didn't you tell me you were driving a cab? You kept your secret. Well, I know, but, well, I told Marie I was teaching night school, and it, it just seems simpler if I told everybody that so she wouldn't find out by mistake. Well, boy, you sure picked a tough way to earn extra money. And I'll say. I was robbed last night. <laughs> what? Yeah, right after Rhoda got out of my cab. Oh, Murray. Yeah, and that's not the worst part. I had to go to the police station to file the report, which made me later than usual getting home. And I couldn't call and tell Marie where I was. Well, you should have told her anyway. No. I was afraid she'd get upset and mad because I was trying to make that extra money for her present, you know, and make me stop. You know what she's like. She'd be worried I was going to get robbed or some silly thing like that. <laughs> did I just say what I just said? Yes, you did. Well, anyway. She was worried because I wasn't home on time. She called the night school, and they said they never heard of me. So she found out you were driving a cab anyway, right? Worse than that. Marie doesn't believe I was driving a cab at all these nights. Mary. Marie is convinced that I am having an affair with someone. Oh, that is worse. With you. <laughs> oh. More worse. You and me having an, an affair? Oh, Murray, did you tell Marie how absolutely ridiculous, how unlikely that is? Oh, sure. So I told her I was driving cabs at night to make extra money, and she said, what do we need the extra money for? I just couldn't tell her. Well, Murray, I think you should. No. Then quit that other job. Give her the car when you saved enough for the down payment. But, Murray, please tell Marie you and I are not having an affair. <laughs> Have you heard the latest scuttlebutt? No, what is the latest scuttlebutt, Ted? Mary and Murray. They're not having an affair. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Two people in this newsroom are not having an affair. Hmm, got any more bombshells like that? Call it, call it, call it. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were busy. I'm not, I'm not. Come in, come in. <clears throat> well, uh, Mr. Grant, I was just wondering if it would be all right if I leave before the show is over tonight. Um, see, I have something uh, sort of personal to take care of. <clears throat> but you know, if you say that it's uh, not all right, that, that will uh, be all, all right. I don't know, Lois. A lot of people seem to be taking advantage of you lately. One of these days, I'm going to ask to leave the show before it's over. <laughs> you know, I just may take him up on that. <laughs> Go ahead, Murray and I will hold down the fort. Thank you. Anything else? Well, it's about the Murray problem. I don't want to hear there is a Murray problem. You, but, Mr. Grant... No, no, no. You handle it, not me. But that's what I'm trying to do. Fine, fine. You just go ahead and do it. As long as it doesn't involve me. Mary, is he sleeping on his typewriter? 
Uh, maybe he's uh, just resting. Or maybe after all these years of pounding a typewriter, he finally got curious and is looking inside it to see what makes it go. Mr. Grant, he's sleeping. Uh, Mr. Grant, look, I don't usually go prying into people's personal affairs, but before you get mad at Murray, there's something you ought to know. Murray is working nights driving a cab to earn extra money. Why didn't he just come and tell me he needed more money? Then I could have told him why I can't give it to him. But see, Mr. Grant, he's trying to earn the money so he can afford to give his wife a really sensational 10th wedding anniversary present. I mean, isn't that just the darlingest, <laughs> the nicest thing you ever heard of? Uh, Larry, a man shouldn't have to go through what he's going through to buy his wife a present. Right. A man shouldn't have to exhaust himself driving a cab at night so that his work suffers and he gets chewed out by a hard-nosed guy like me. Oh, Mr. Grant, I'm just so glad to hear you feel this way. Oh, I do, I do. So you tell Murray to either quit that other job or he's had it. <laughs> but, Mr. Grant... Mary, I have a newsroom to run here, right? Right. Murray. See? Just one little cat nap and I'm fresh as a daisy. Only six more days of this, Mayor, and I'm home free. Murray. Yes, Mayor. Listen, I'm, I know you wouldn't have wanted me to, but I told Mr. Grant about your other job. You did? Yeah. Uh, see, I figured if he knew why you've been so tired lately, then you, know, you wouldn't be under so much pressure. Mary, you're a doll. You're terrific to do that for me. What can I say? Oh, uh, well, you, you could say, Mary, why don't you mind your own business? What? Mr. Grant said you've got to quit that other job or you had it. Oh, you're kidding. No. Oh, why couldn't I just leave bad enough alone? No, Mary, it's not your fault. You meant well. Really, it's okay. Yeah, well, now what are you going to do? I don't know. Either way, I lose. If I keep going for the car, I lose my job here. And if I don't go for the car, Marie will never believe that you and I aren't having an affair. Hey, Marie, could you answer something for me? Sure. Uh, why does she think it's me? I don't know. Who else is there? <laughs> Besides, she said I talk about you all the time. You know, it must be hard for a wife to understand that her husband and a single woman can be just friends. Yeah, but we are. I know. <laughs> now, how could she think that you would do a thing like that? Oh, boy, I can't wait till next week when I give her that car and see that look on her face. <laughs> Is she gonna feel rotten? <laughs> such a nice home. Yes, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, uh, please excuse the mess. I had the kids in here and everything. Oh, what a cute puzzle. Cow jumped over the moon, huh? <laughs> Which one of the kids is working on this? I am. <laughs> I just finished Cornwallis's surrender at Yorktown, and there weren't any other ones in the house, so I... Uh, uh, Marie... Tomorrow I'm buying this big round one. 5,000 pieces, all white. It's the hardest one they make. Hey, Marie, don't do this to yourself. Well, what am I supposed to do? I don't know how to knit. I mean, please don't drive yourself crazy thinking that Murray is having an affair with anyone, especially me, because he's not. Look... Mary, you might think that I am just a little naive housewife, but I know what goes on in those newsrooms. Oh, Marie, listen, couldn't we just sit down and talk? Mary, I know that you are a very nice girl, and you, you wouldn't purposely fall in love with Murray. It's just that you couldn't help it. 
He's a very sexy man. <laughs> Isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have known it since our first date. We went to see The King and I with Yul Brynner. And you should have seen the looks we got coming out of the movie. Well, Marie, the thing is, uh, you know, as, as irresistible as Marie is, there are some dumb women in this world who don't uh, love Yul Brynner, you know, or uh, even Paul Newman. <laughs> and I guess I'm just uh, one of those women. You don't love Paul Newman? No, uh, no. Oh, well, well then... I how do you feel about Murray? Uh, same thing. <laughs> Dumb, huh? <laughs> well, if it isn't you, then who is it? Marie, it isn't anybody. Oh, come on, Mary. What's he doing out every night? And why did he lie to me and tell me that he was teaching night school? Now, who is he seeing? Marie, can you keep a secret? About who he's seeing? No! I mean, Marie, Murray would kill me if he knew that I told you. So you got to promise me, yes, you will never tell him, or I can't tell you, and that's a shame because it's a great secret. You're going to love it. I will? Yes. Well, okay, I, I promise. Okay, Murray has been driving a cab at night so that he can buy you a new car for your anniversary. That's why he couldn't tell you. A brand new car? Yes! Oh, oh. Dear wonderful man. <laughs> and I thought that yeah. you were Oh, how could I have thought that you oh. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Mary, can you forgive me? Yes, I can. You just gotta promise you'll never tell Marie I told you, or it'll ruin his whole surprise. Oh, right, right, I promise. Okay. <laughs> Marie, I'm Mary. Wait. What are you doing here? Oh, you dear wonderful man. <laughs> Older. I'm sorry, Murray. It just seemed like the only thing to do. No, it's okay, Mary. Now, look, honey. I had to quit that other job before I got all the money I needed. Oh. So I'm not going to get a car? No, no. You're going to get a car. You're just not going to get... What I mean to say is, remember our second anniversary of 1963? And I wanted to buy you that new car, but you said no. You didn't think we could afford it? Yes. Well... I finally got you that car. That car? Yeah, 1963 car. <laughs> well, I guess I'll uh, just be going. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, I can, you know, see myself. <laughs> so, you know, goodbye. <laughs> On the local scene, a hotly debated tippler's tax caused considerable argument. In the city council today, the proposed heavy tax on liquor is certain to become a controversial issue during the upcoming election champagne. Oh. Here's Gordy with the recap of the weather. Murray? Not me, Lou. I quit that other job. Yeah, he did, Mr. Grant. He really did. Look, here's a copy of the news copy. It was Ted's fault. Uh-huh. 